All right, if you uh, if you took my introduction to Sprite Kit course, you are probably chomping at the bit to see some of the uh, physics things that you can do in uh, Sprite Kit. So uh, we'll lead off with uh, basically just creating our world and uh, running through a few quick little tests that you can do with uh, physics. So uh, let's go and inside of our init statement, let's get rid of this for right now. In fact, what I'll do is I'll uh, just leave that commented out because we we can go and steal some of that uh, label code for the, later. But uh, let's do this. Let's write in here self set up scene, and of course that is a a method name, and we don't actually have a corresponding method there. So let's go ahead and write one void set up scene, and when we do that. That little red dot should go away. And let's put a little note here. Take care of setting up the world. And later on, we'll um, uh, and bring in the property list. I'll leave that alone for right now, just so we get to play with some uh, fun stuff. And you'll appreciate that, certainly, if you, uh, if you already know how to work with property lists. All right, so um, in... Or at the, I should say, at the uh, at the top of this file, what I'm going to do is uh, declare some things that we're going to uh, want to access throughout um, kind of the entire run of this program here in uh, various methods. And uh, if I were to just uh, write in here, for example, SK node, which is kind of your basic building block of anything in uh, Sprite Kit, my world. I'm limiting the scope of this, okay? Uh, after or whenever after this uh, this method was done running, uh, my world is simply kind of not accessible here, all right? Because I just declared this um, again locally, just kind of inside of this one particular method. Now, if I had uh, declared it outside of that in a place up here. I'd be able to access my world throughout any of these possible methods that I'm going to write. So that is why we're going to do this. And here's how we do it. We're going to put up here at interface, and then we can uh, put back, spit back CS level. So that's just our class name again. And you put inside, uh, or actually just write those little two brackets right there. And then we don't need to put that super class. All right, so uh, this is where we will uh, declare things, and if you guys are kind of used to doing it another way, you you can do it. You can still do it that other way. You can put things back over here as well. Uh, but I do see the benefit of uh, doing it over here in our implementation file, and it, it, I think it's just that it's a little quicker, really. I mean, you can just run up here to the top of your file and declare things like that SK node there. Um, instead of having to go run back to your header file, there there will be some some things that we um, declare in our header file, but those will be um, um, properties down the road that we're gonna. And actually, I'm not even. Well, they'll be in the character file. They won't even be our level one, I don't think. So anyway, um, yes, we have our SK node, our Sprite Kit node. Yeah, a, a node sounds like a silly word. It's it's just uh, again, it's our, our kind of our most basic object, and we can. Um, put other objects inside of here and that's the whole point of um, creating a world here so it's going to just going to be something that we uh, put other things inside of and one of the reasons that we're doing that is uh, so we can have our character um, or uh, yes our world basically be centered on uh, whoever is the the lead character there so now let's uh, cut back down here to uh, set up scene and we are going to put in my world equals SK node. This is just going to initialize it. And then we're going to write in here self add child my world. So now we've added that child to the world. And I uh, left off one line up here. I'm just going to make the anchor point of our entire class be CG point make. And this is going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And our uh, ranges here are uh, 
would be 0, 0 to uh, 1, 1, I believe. I have to recheck that. But uh, uh, I believe 0, 0 is in the uh, bottom left, and uh, I believe by default that's where our scene, or and keep in mind that self here refers to our SK scene. Okay, so when I write self, that's referring to this class, which is a scene. I believe the uh, the default center point for those is, is in the bottom left, which is at zero, zero, whereas one one would be up in the top right. Uh, so basically, I'm just making the our center point be uh, right there, kind of dead center in the middle. And again, this goes back to kind of keeping everything um, centered. So uh, we should now be basically creating our world in the um, center of the screen. Of course, we don't really have any visual representation of any of this right now, so that'll be one of the next things we do, which will be to uh, uh, go ahead and, and add in at least one sprite, and let's do that. So we're going to come down here and write SK sprite node. Uh, we'll call this one map equals SK sprite node sprite node with image named and uh, later on we're going to replace this with uh, w with the name of the file as defined by the um, the property list but uh, while we're just getting started let's not worry about that uh, we do need to put in here level map one and of course that is that same name of the file that we have in the property list right now uh, it's also the name of this right here and you don't have to put that uh, .png name after it. And if there is a alternate HD1, it'll automatically detect that and use that one. So you don't have to put at 2x behind that either. Uh, now, now I'm going to put uh, map.position equals cg point make and um, we can just put in here zero zero. Uh, now keep in mind that because we um, set our anchor point uh, to being at um, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that's um, basically setting our zero 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 point uh, to the uh, to the middle. And well, we're going to put this map into um, uh, my world anyway, uh, which is going to have its. Um, uh, Zero zero point centered, uh, regardless. So, um, uh, next line will be uh, to actually just add that child. So, we're going to put in here my world, add child, map, and if we give this a uh, oops. Give us a little test run here. We um, we should just see well a grid because remember this uh, our map is a pretty big image uh, anyway. There it is. Uh, so, yeah, you don't really get to see much. If we were to come in here and write map dot uh, x scale equals point point five and map dot y scale equals point five, now what we should be seeing when we run this is uh, the entire map. Uh, and there it is, and it's nicely centered up inside of there. You know, notice that uh, even though we only have one node inside of here now, there's um, this is set to, I mean, this is running at 30 frames per second. So when we do actually have characters running around, things like that, and you see that the frame rate is only at 30 frames per second, don't think that that's because of those characters running around. It's just that the simulator is uh, generally going to be a lot slower than your actual devices. All right, so we've, um, we've got this centered up. Again, keep in mind, our uh, middle point, or our zero, zero point is squarely in the middle of the stage there and uh, we can go to wipe out our X and Y scaling of course uh, by default they're at 1 and 1 which is at a hundred percent and uh, now one of the things that we can do is um, let's go ahead and set our uh, set up our physics world and we can do that right here. Let's put a little note. Set up physics. Alright, self dot physics world dot gravity. It's going to be CG vector make and um, 
you guys might have seen in the beta versions of uh, Xcode 5, you actually just put a CG point here, and they changed it at the very end to a CG vector make, uh, but it, it's it's very similar. It's um, uh, the the first number here is going to be controlling the um, basically the the horizontal uh, forces, and the second one is going to be the um, the uh, the vertical forces. So if we were to just put in here zero zero, uh, there's no forces applied anywhere, right? Uh, now if we had this set to uh, one, then it would um, pull our objects to the right. If we had this set to a uh, negative one and pull them to the left, and um, don't think that that's your range though. You could have this uh, quite higher. And uh, same thing over here. So if you were to um, set this to like negative 0 0.9, uh, that would pull everybody uh, down to the bottom of the stage. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put in here self dot physics world dot contact delegate is going to equal self, and uh, that uh, that really just means that. Here you get that nice little warning. It says assigning to ID SK physics contact delegate from incompatible to whatever. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's just mad at me right now because I haven't gone over here to my uh, header file and said that this class is going to be the physics contact delegate, and that should solve that little problem right there. Uh, let's cut back over here to this and see if that uh, goes away and sure enough it uh, it did um, basically I'm just saying that you know what I'm gonna be responsible this class is gonna be responsible for handling um, what to do with um, with contacts okay so when one thing um, bumps up against another and uh, you know I think we can still get away with publishing this at this point uh, even without the um, the actual method that handles that um, contact delegation or the contacting and I'm not seeing any sort of warnings or errors yet so I'll assume we're still good there but uh, later on we're gonna put in a method here that's um, very soon actually we'll put in here a method that uh, deals with that alright uh, now you know what let's go ahead and take a uh, I don't know. I guess we'll just leave all the physics under kind of one heading here. But uh, <clears throat> now we'll skip back to playing around with our world. So my world, uh, we're going to say physics body. And this is going to equal SK physics body body with edge loop from rect. And... Um, for now, let's uh, just make this th the rectangle end up being the map dot frame, and you'll see as I type in um, just the fr here, just the f, you'll, uh, it'll auto fill in for me frame, and uh, that's uh, really not the point. What I want to show you is that uh, it's asking me here body with edge loop from rect, and then oh, missed it, and then showing me that uh, the the frame property is a CG rect, so that's always a good sign. Uh, that you know you're, you're, something's asking for a rectangle that you give them that uh, that particular property. So uh, versus uh, frame has some sub properties here. So uh, you know if you try to put in frame dot size, that's not correct because you see that's a CG size right there. So it's that frame that it wants, and uh, that will um, that will that will basically just make the um, the body of this. Um, the boundaries of it be that, um, that same re rectangle is defined by you know the the, sp the size of uh, our image right. Uh, later on, what we'll do is uh, actually uh, kind of shift the the potential border uh, by making it uh, a uh, it could be a fraction of that uh, particular size of the of the background image. Uh, in the example you guys saw in the introduction, it was 90% of the actual image size. All right, so um, my world dot physics body dot category bit mask. Okay, um, 
Let's read a little bit over here. It says, a mass that defines which categories this physics body belongs to. Every physics body in a scene can be assigned um, to up to 32 different uh, categories, each co corresponding to a bit in the bit mask. It's getting a little technical now. Um, the default value is zero, and then X, F, 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 all bits. All right. Uh, <laughs> you can... You can put in here, you can define these in bits, or as I found, you can just put in here numbers. Um, well, not, uh, simple integers like this. So you can just say um, the, the category here is one, the category here is two. Uh, what makes a little bit more sense is to go and um, define something in our constants file. So let's have, um, let's, uh, let's define a wall category, right? And um, if you guys remember from the last video, we set up a constants file over here. So uh, let's continue this, and we'll have a static constant int. That'll be our wall category. And well, let's just make it equal to 4. <laughs> I'm saying 4 because that's what it equaled in my uh, original test project. And I'm going to throw in here a, another one, which will be our player category. And if you're wondering, wondering why we uh, are, are setting up these categories for things, it's um, it's, it's really, uh, I don't know why I'm getting a warning here. Oh, probably because, hold on, let me, I'll continue that thought in a second. Let me go over here and actually import in the uh, constants.h file. And as soon as I do that, I should see that disappear. All right, so, and this will turn green as well, so it knows what I'm referring to here. Um, in our uh, method that we write later on to detect when things have contacted each other, um, the, basically uh, what, uh, the, what happens is you have two bodies, right? If there is one thing is contacting another, it's you have the first object or node and then you have the second object or node. So what we're gonna wanna find out is, all right, well, what was the category of that first node? What was the category of that second node? And we're basically just kind of running if statements in there that say, all right, well, if you are a wall and uh, you hit a player, then maybe you're going to damage that player. Or if you were a player that hit another player, we don't care about that, so ignore it, okay? And you can set up these um, situations where um, where you don't you don't care or you do care, right? And um, and that's nice because then you know if you set it so that um, a player can just run up against a, a, a brush or something like that and never have any sort of collision or things like that, you know it obviously saves uh, on uh, on the program kind of having to to process. Well, what do you do in this case? Nothing. Great. <laughs> let's move on. Okay. So speaking of moving on, let's uh, let's go back over here to our level and. Um, see what other things we need to uh, initially set up here. Uh, obviously the, the fun thing to test will be actually getting some sort of character in here that can react to the uh, the, the gravity that uh, we set up. Even though gravity <laughs> obviously doesn't play much into my uh, example project, it is a, it, it's a, it's a fun thing to, to kind of play around with early on. All right, well, uh, yeah, I think we're, we're on to that stage. So uh, let's come up here and um, I mean, we could write this at the end of this statement. I'm going to write it just over here, uh, and I'm going to write self perform selector and uh, at selector, I'm going to say set up characters, and um, I don't need an object. With object will be nil. Uh, what I really want from this is just to delay it a little bit. I'm going to put in here a, a three. Eh, let's make it a four second delay. And um, the reason I'm doing that is because later on, of course, we're going to put some text in here that just basically gives the, you know, some instructions, swipe up or down, things like that. And, and four seconds is about right. Um, so I need to put in here set up characters. And we should stop getting warnings. Uh, we can at this point put in an NS log statement that uh, just kind of tells us that uh, this is actually running. Set up characters. And let's make sure that we're seeing that. Just to prove that I can write in here a method with a four second delay. All right, so it's running it, and sure enough, well, 
I guess that was four seconds, <laughs> set up characters. So um, let's take a little break, and uh, when we come back, we'll actually set up those characters. <laughs> 